in this video I'm going to attempt to see how far I can reach with my thoughts on personnel and scheme as it relates to uh, Greg Roman, really as it relates to Patrick Ricard after the news of him signing today drew such wide-ranging visceral reactions from Ravens fans. I did a video earlier today about Ricard um, and, and some of the personnel uh, discussions or, or thoughts that people have in terms of you know playing Prochet more, playing Duvernay more on offense, playing um, Ricard more. You know, some combination of those three. I think those are the three main guys that are there in terms of where the offense is going to go. So I have to I have to use film and, and use data for me to feel like I'm giving you guys anything that's worth your time. I don't feel like I'm any good at all at, at giving you just my thoughts without giving you some film and giving you some data. So I'm, it's going to be kind of wide-ranging. I'm not sure if I'll be able to hit on all the points that my brain – is trying to hit on. So what I'm gonna, what I did, was I was able to find some information about the Ravens' offensive uses during the season in terms of personnel. So hopefully this graphic or this initial page doesn't look, um, isn't too, you know, overwhelming in terms of text. All right. So I was able to find some data and information about, you know, the Ravens' total number of offensive plays. It's up in the top left, 1,251 plays during 2021 on offense. We know that they're, you know, missing offensive linemen, Ronnie Stanley out, missed Lamar Jackson for a lot of the year, missing two running backs, huge injuries across the board. So some of this data might be a little bit skewed, but I still think it has the Greg Roman stamp on it. And I think there's more to be said about Greg Roman than there is about Pat Ricard. And I think some of the criticisms of Ricard are um, off base, number one. I think they should be more so directed at Greg Roman for being predictable. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be a long video to be straight with you. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go by personnel grouping. So the first one in the top left, 11 personnel, the Ravens ran at 43% of the time this year. Out of those 1,251 plays, the league average for 11 personnel is, is 61%. Of course, the Ravens number is inside of that number. So if you were to take the Ravens out of that data, it's probably a little higher, maybe 61.4, maybe even 62. But in any case, that's one running back, one tight end, and three receivers. The Ravens using it 43% of the time was the third lowest in the NFL. The only two teams that used 11 personnel less was Atlanta and Miami. Uh, Miami was really heavily weighted towards 12 personnel, as you'll see, hopefully, if you watch the whole video, and I make it entertaining enough. Cleveland was close to us with 45%. Conversely, the Rams were at 86%, 11 personnel. That's all they do. Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and Washington, they were all between 70 and 77%. So it's not like you can say, oh, all you got to do is be 11 personnel and you're going to score points. Well, then what's up with Pittsburgh and Washington? It's not that simple, all right? It's not that simple. So then what I want to do now is go from the data that is for the whole season, and now I'm going to talk about my data. So as some of you know, if you're in my Patreon or you've heard watching my videos before, I have a database of Ravens film that I am keeping and updating myself. You can see the data entered at the top of the page. You know, I make this accessible to my patrons. That's not the point of the video to try to recruit more people to my Patreon. Of course, I would love that. I am telling you where I got the data from. This is my work and other people in, the, in, in my Discord and my Patreon, their work as well. Multiple guys. Frank has helped. A couple other guys have helped before. It's been, been a huge help. I have my own data for 11 personnel, and here it is. Uh, it's 174 plays, which I think is representative of what the Ravens run out of 11. Because, you know, again, keep in mind, 11 personnel, we did 43% of the time out of a total of 1,251 plays. So what are you looking at there? Uh, 370, something like that. Maybe maybe my number's wrong there. My number's got to be really wrong. My number's way wrong. It's got to be bigger than that. It's got to be bigger than 430. 470 maybe? I don't know. But it's got to it's be a bigger number than than the first first number I gave you. And in any case, I have 174 of those in my database labeled with run, pass, direction, gain, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I wish that I could ask you the question and then get an answer. I wish I was doing a live stream right now. So, but I, I, I can't ask a question that way for answer. So I just got to give you the data. 174 plays, 28 run plays, and 146 pass plays. I believe that breaks down to 16% run, 84% pass. Completely predictable. 
in terms of the run pass completely. Now you can say, well, coach and 11 personnel was probably all our third and long stuff, and you would be correct. But a point that I have to make on this is Pat Ricard's not on the field in 11 personnel. He's not. It's one running back and one tight end. Now, we did have a version of 11 personnel later on in the season when Ricard was on the field. Uh, so so that maybe this skews the data a little bit, but got to be less than 2 or 3% overall of the data that I have. So, again, my data indicates 16% run, 84% pass out of 11 personnel. That includes 13 plays with a loss of yards. So about 7% of the plays is loss of yards, including nine sacks and two interceptions. What's playing on the screen is all 11 personnel plays. You can see from the date you can see up here, it should stay say all 11 personnel for each one of these plays, and it should go in order. I'm not going to talk through all 174 11 personnel plays. I'm just going to talk briefly about the data. What does it mean? It means that Greg Roman is predictable in certain situations. It means that, you know, when Patrick Ricard is off the field, maybe we're too heavily weighted Pat. Let me rephrase that. It could mean that when Pat Ricard is off the field, we're, we're too heavily weighted towards the pass. But we're, if you were to look at the down and distances like this one here, it shows you third and six. So in, in this database, as it's playing, it's going to be telling you, showing you, excuse me, the down and distance for these situations. So you could aggregate this if you had access to the data like I do. I'm the one that's put in all the work. Now, some further data from 11 personnel, according to just the data that I have. Average 6.54 yards per play. Uh, shout out and thanks to uh, one of my patrons, Kyle Richardson. He helped me with the data, helped me get that. Total of uh, about 1,100 yards out of that 174 plays. So 6.5 yards per play out of 11 personnel. You know, what does it mean, Coach? Are you telling us we should not be running 11 personnel? No, I'm just giving you the data. And, and illustrating to you that we were heavily weighted towards the pass when, when we were in 11 personnel. You haven't seen Pat Ricard on the field for a lot of these. There's certainly going to be people that run up in the comments and say we should be in 11 personnel more because the, the league average was 61% and the Ravens were only in it 43%. It's quite possible that the plan was to be in 11 personnel more this year. Anyway, that's, that's possible. All of our conceptions about the 2021 season on offense – have to be uh, have to be questioned a little bit because we don't know what the original plan would have been with Dobbins and Edwards and Ronnie Stanley, and we're, you know who knows we might never see another healthy version of Nick Boyle. You know I have said in terms of the Ricard issue because that's what this is somewhat related to Ricard, Prochet, Duvernay. You know I have I have said multiple times that I didn't think that we should resign him. I did not. That doesn't mean he's not an effective player. I just I thought that we could draft someone who can be that tight end slash H back, kind of like a Nick Boyle type guy. Boyle could serve in that role, and I think he did in 2019. I think that Ricard on the field is n not a receiving threat at all. And some of you guys that are saying that he lined up at receiver, that's not true. He did not line up at receiver out wide and run routes downfield. He did not do that. He might have lined up in the slot and blocked as a tight end. So, like, for example, Mark Andrews right here. He is a tight end. He's lined up off the line. A lot of you guys will call that in the slot. It is called a slot. you got a receiver who's on the line outside of you, and you're off the line. You are a slot, not a wing. That's not a receiver, though. That's that's not a, a receiver from the stand. People are using um, him lining up as a slot and, and then skewing that to say, Oh, well, Greg Roman used him as a receiver. That's not true. Come up in the comments and say that he did, that, that that's what happened. That's not true. Were there times in, in empty where he was lined up out wide? Sure. Hopefully a couple of them play on this on this on this data set here or this play set. But to act like that Ricard was used as a receiver instead of James Prochet, that's a lie. That's an abs absolute lie. It's not true. Ricard produced, excuse me, Prochet produced as a receiver. We all want to see him get on the field more, certainly. You know, I've, I've produced videos saying as such. that, But we're not going to make up lies to justify that, saying that Pat Ricard was used as a receiver consistently. And even some people said more often than Prochet. Like, get out of here. That's garbage. Unsubscribe from my channel and, and, and do yourself. Or, or go ahead and comment and put that out there because it's not true. 
So in any case, 11 personnel, I've given you how heavily weighted we were towards the pass. So what I'm going to do now is move back to the data for the whole season. And we're going to move on to the next personnel grouping. And this shows you the Greg Roman offense. If, if you recall from 11 personnel, we were minus 18% in terms of 11 personnel compared to the league average. 21 personnel, the Ravens ran 22% of the time, so almost one-fourth, right? Whereas the league average for 21 personnel was 7%. 21 personnel, if you're not sure, is two running backs, one tight end, and then two wide receivers. We were the third highest in the NFL at running 21 personnel this past year in 2021. This only includes 2021 data. I do intend to look back at 2020 and 2021. The only teams with a higher percent running um, 21 personnel was San Francisco and New England. They two pretty successful teams there too, right? But we, that's not me saying we should be running 21 personnel a quarter of the time. We should be running whatever works. We should be running whatever works, and that changes week by week. Some weeks it'll be a Prochet week or, or a Prochet Duvernay week. Bateman and Brown and Andrews, those are given. They should be on the field. I'm not even, you know, I'm omitting them from this discussion. I'm, discussion I'm focusing in on Ricard, Prochet, Duvernay, and then to a lesser extent, Tyler Wallace. I do want to see him get his opportunities because I think he can play. Atlanta ran 21 personnel 20% of the time, so they were right there below us. But you can see league average is 7%. We're at 22. San Francisco and New England are higher than us. Atlanta's at 20 those four teams really skewed that data. The league average is probably probably somewhere near five and a half, maybe even a little less than five and a half. You know, if you were to take out those four teams, Ravens, 49ers, Patriots, and Falcons. Hopefully I explain that in a way that makes sense. So then what I'm going to do is tell you my, my data that I have in my database for 21 personnel. I got 113 plays in 21 personnel. I think it's about half of what the Ravens actually run um, for the whole season in 21 personnel. I think it's about half, maybe a little less than half. Maybe it's 42%. And run past you. This is the part that's going to shock you. Ricard's on the field in 21 personnel generally. He's on the field. You would probably suspect that we would be, like, really highly weighted towards the run. We're not. It's the most balanced personnel grouping that we had in terms of run pass. We were 55 runs and 58 passes. Again, this is my data. I feel like 113 plays out of 21 personnel is representative of the Ravens offense. If you don't, that's fine. You know, I won't argue with you about that. I wish I had all of it in there. If you want to help me get every play in the database, then join my Patreon. Help me help me put the time in and label all the plays, all right? But in any case, you know, clearly the Ravens were really heavily weighted towards 21 personnel versus the rest of the league, but it was our most balanced run pass uh, personnel grouping. But I think there's something to be said there, though, inside of that. And, and we're going to let these plays run. Again, you got the personnel labeled here and the down and distance labeled here and here. So you can look at that as the plays run. I want to talk a little bit about 21 personnel because there's two versions of it. One version is a tailback and Ricard, and then Andrews as the tight end. Andrews is a tight end. Then the, the other version of 21 personnel is a tailback and Ricard, and then Tomlinson. And I suspect, and I don't, I can't say this definitively, but I suspect that our 21 personnel grouping might not be as balanced as I just told you. But before, I'll come back to that in a moment. 700 total yards in the database I have on 113 plays. Roughly 6.2 per carry. I think it's 6.19 something. So a little bit less yards per play than 11 personnel, but still comparable. Uh, 10 plays with loss of yards, including four sacks and one interception. Not necessarily making any grand points about the number of um, negative yardage plays or interceptions, to be honest with you. Yards, yards per play in 11 and 21 is you know, somewhat similar. I'm, I'm not talking about Lamar at all here. I'm just talking about the scheme, how many times we ran the personnel groupings, what our yards per play were. Yards per play is a, is a flawed stat. You know, I, I'll, I'll give that to you. I'm trying to give you stats, things that I notice. And then let me go back to the point I just made. Uh, we have two versions of 21 personnel. This one here has Ricard. 
and then Andrews. I would offer to you that this one is probably a, a balanced run pass personnel grouping. And when Tomlinson is on for Andrews, we probably would be more weighted towards the run. Now, in this case, it's a counter option play. And Andrews on the field. This is one of my favorite plays that the Ravens run. I don't think we run it enough. Uh, Andrews is in the slot, so he's off the line of scrimmage. He's releasing outside. Ricard is in the backfield as the fullback. He's releasing outside. And then we've got the guard and the tackle pulling opposite. And this is, I call it a little wind back run um, angle by the tailback. So Lamar is going to open to our left, his right. This guy's a re guy, 95. So what he should do is he should step down to take away the dive. But this play is not option to his side. This is counter option. I actually have this mislabeled here as option right. It's a wind back play. So Lamar's getting off the midline. The midline, if you don't know, is the line where the ball was snapped. So the midline is the left part of this hash. Lamar, the center, and the tailback are on the midline. Tailback's a little bit canted or off center. But Lamar's going to give up the midline on the snap, meaning he's going he's gonna to clear his hips from the midline. Actually, his left foot's not exactly clear, but it's pretty much where it should be. And the running back would wind this back behind the two, the two pulling linemen, which is Zeitler and Makari. They they gonna pull, and it's I call it counter option. Actually, it's not them two. My bad. We pulled a center this time because we got a, a guy for Zeitler to back block, block back on. So we got good angle to block back on him, a good angle to block back on him, <clears throat> and we're pulling the center, and the tackle. Typically, it would be your guard and tackle. In any case, it's still counter option. Great play, one that goes against our tendency of using Ricard. You can see that we're pulling this linebacker out here. This D end is. Is, is staying you know, with Lamar, essentially, for the quarterback. He's just not fast enough to deal with Lamar. I think this should be an auto-pull every time because we got two lead blockers out here, Ricard, and then Andrew's a little bit off-center, off-screen, excuse me. I think it should be an auto-pull every time. If the linebackers are going to go with the pulling lineman, which they should, if they're able to, if they got high beams and low beam eyes, they should be able to see the lineman pulling. Lamar, keep it, and now we got two lead blockers. I think it's a wonderful play that was not utilized enough um, you know, certainly some people read Ricard, and that is, that goes back to the Greg Roman tendencies in that sometimes, you know, Ricard just takes you to the play. And in this case, he does, even though he's pulling line and, you know, going against that flow. So 21 personnel, you know, am I saying we should be in 21 personnel more n next year? No, actually I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I would be – we were in it 22% of the time this past year. I would advocate for us being in 21 personnel like – maybe 12 to 15% of the time at most, at most. I think we've got guys who can do damage at, at running back coming back. We, we, we clearly do, but we've got guys at, at receiver who can do damage as well, and we want to get them all to football. We should, the, point, the problem is we're like a basketball team that's got six or seven guys who could average 10 points a game, but there's just not enough enough basketballs to go around. You know, um, to get back to the Ricard thing, do I think that Pat Ricard should be on the field as much next year as he was this year? No, I don't. I advocated for him to not be brought back in the first place. Do I think he's versatile enough to do a whole bunch of stuff and give the Ravens some versatility? Yes, with one caveat, in that we can't line him up at receiver and really threaten people or in the slot and really threaten people. He catches balls occasionally, but he catches balls out in the flat on delayed pass plays or play action stuff out into the flat. You know, like the video I released earlier Monday, you know, talked about him catching those four balls on that drive against Minnesota this year, I think in the third quarter, and then in the playoff game at Tennessee in 2020 when he had that great drive to begin the third quarter. I think he had three catches there and then a uh, a really nice block to spring J.K. Dobbins free for a touchdown as the Ravens took control on that first drive of the third quarter against Tennessee. Look, we can use him. He's certainly not a uh, – a huge piece of the offense. He's a knight. And what I mean by that, he, on the chess chess board, he has a specific way that he can move and he can impact. But he can move right, he can move left, he can move anywhere. He's not like certain pieces that can only go, you know, in one flat direction. I like him. I'm glad we kept him. Even though me personally, I would not have done so. I'm able to separate my own thoughts from it. 
That looks like counter option to me again. No, that's just power, sorry. But again, Ricard's taking you to the play. So one of the things that people have complained about, and they have a valid point, is that regardless of what's happening up here, you know, Ricard often takes you to the play in this offense. I love the fact that we're opening opposite. So once again, Lamar's getting off the midline here with his hips. The midline is where the ball is snapped, so it's the inside part of this hash. Watch Lamar clear the midline so that Murray can come down the midline and then veer over here for the power play. Doesn't, I don't think it gains many yards on this play. Yeah, it's a loss. Somebody beats Villanueva badly on the inside. He's like a seven technique. We got Villanueva over here on the right, and we've switched him in the tight end, which is Andrews, because we generally don't want to run behind Andrews, and this guy beats Villanueva pretty badly on the inside. Villanueva can't take him down. Tackle for loss. Well, that's my data for 21 personnel. Again, I have 113 plays out of out of 21 in the database, all labeled with the, the data that you see at the top of the screen. You know, um, is there certain times where the formation doesn't look like a 21 personnel formation? Sure. There's times where we put Ricard in the slot. He's in the slot right here, if you ask me. I call this the slot. He's lined up off the line scrimmage as a tight end. If you're going to come on here and you're going to say that we consistently lined up Ricard here, or here, you're wrong. <clears throat> now, we did line him up here some, but typically when we did, he went in motion. Even though that guy, uh, which I think is Oliver, is on the line. Usually when he lined up in the slot or he lined up here, he went in motion. Uh, we, there was there was not many situations where he lined up at receiver and ran a route downfield. That's just inaccurate. 21 personnel with uh, Ricard on the field and uh, Tomlinson here. Andrews is off. And going along with my theory, we are a little bit more run heavy when Tomlinson's on the field with Ricard. So there was a lot of tells in Greg Roman's offense, and people who complained about it have right to complain, every right to complain. Uh, there are times where you can sit there and you can say, oh, this is run, oh, this is pass, just based on the personnel or the formation that's out there. Let's look at uh, the third highest personnel grouping that the Ravens used this year. Oh, wrong one, sorry. 22 personnel, which I do have a big problem with. Not not a huge fan of us using 22, except against those teams that we could clearly bully. We, we bullied Kansas City. We bullied the Chargers. I think there was two or three possessions against the Vikings. We bullied them. But there's a lot of teams we were not able to bully. We were not. And I just feel like 22. Look at the, the league average is 3%. The Ravens are at 14%. That's the highest in the NFL. The next highest in terms of using 22 personnel, was Atlanta at 12%. The next three teams, in terms of you know, how often they use 22 personnel, San Francisco, 7%, Minnesota, 8 and the Raiders, 6%. They were the only ones above 5 So the data is completely skewed by the Ravens and the Falcons. Now, I'm going to jump to 12 here for a minute because I'm going to make what I think is a larger point. We use in 22 personnel the same way a lot of other teams use 12 personnel. 12, 12 personnel is one running back, two tight ends. There's a lot of teams that use that second tight end as an H-back, similar to Ricard. So even though the we look like we're totally heavy towards 22, and we, we were when we ran it a lot, especially with Tomlinson and Andrews, we did. The other teams are doing the same thing. They're just doing it from a different personnel grouping. So it's not like other teams are not doing these things. For example, if you go down to the bottom of this data set that I'm showing you here on this page, 12 personnel, 12 personnel Ravens use 9% of the time. League average on 12 personnel is 21%. But that data is absolutely skewed. If you go all the way over to the bottom right, Miami ran 12, the, Dol the Dolphins ran 12 personnel 61% of the time. A huge number compared to the rest of the league. Ravens 12 personnel was the lowest usage in the entire NFL for 12. You know, part of that might be because Tomlinson didn't really offer us much. Now, we did use Ricard as a tight end. But that's classified as 21 personnel. Ricard, a tailback, 
and Andrews on the field is classified as 21 personnel. Now, the formation they actually lined up in, though, could have been, in some cases, a 12 personnel formation. Hopefully, I'm saying that in a way that makes sense. But NFL defenses respond to your personnel grouping first. So if Ricard's on the field with Andrews and one running back, they're going to classify that as 21 personnel because that's the grouping that it is. Ricard is a fullback. Ricard lines up as a tight end. They're going to have already have their base defense on the field. They can't substitute at that point, right? It's not how it works. But they're going to probably have some check or some call to, to treat the formation differently. That's, that's called AFC, automatic front check. People, people have automatics to line up in depending on what formation you line up in. I kind of maybe lost a little steam there talking about 22 and 12 personnel. My point was the Ravens use 22 personnel highest in the NFL. They use 12 personnel, the lowest in the NFL, but they were trying to accomplish the same thing in some ways that the tw the teams that use 12 personnel a lot did. Only one other team in the NFL was below 10%, and I think that was Kansas City. And they were like 9.4 or something. Maybe, maybe I got the numbers backwards there. But in any case, look, the Ravens offense is trying to accomplish the same things other people are. In some cases, they're doing it in a different way. I'm going to go ahead and go 22 personnel just so you guys get a, a an idea of what that is in case in case you're unsure and and it'll look real familiar to you. Um if you if you've watched the Ravens at all, you, you generally are going to be going to have what you would say is heavy personnel grouping cuz you got two, two tight ends on the field and two backs. So Ricard and Tyson Williams here in week 1. Now this is an extra lineman here. I think that's Cologne here so I I classified him as a second tight end because Tomlinson is off the line. So Tomlinson is off the line, meaning Cologne is eligible. He had to have reported as eligible before that play. You're talking about heavy run um, tendency out of 22 personnel, the plays I'm showing you. I, in my database, I have 66 plays out of 22 personnel. <clears throat> 40 of them are run plays. 26 of them are pass plays. So percent-wise, that breaks down. That breaks down to uh, 22 personnel is 61% run, 39% pass. But here's my point. If you're going to say that 22 personnel is predictable, and it is, it is, then you have to say our 11 personnel is even more predictable. Our 11 personnel is 84% pass. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways and say, well, when the card is on the field, we're predictable. And when Ricard is off the field, we're not predictable. The problem is Ricard. You can't say that because you can't because you're trying to have it both ways. Now again, I'm not I'm not defending signing Pat Ricard because I wanted him gone myself. I did. I I would have I would have wanted a more versatile tight end who we didn't have to sub on and off. I would have wanted, and I've said it multiple times, a guy like Rucker from Ohio State, someone who could line up at tight end one play and could line up at fullback the next or H back the next. And and so we wouldn't have to sub so much because I think that's a, a separate issue, but it's a related issue in that we're subbing so much, we get into the line late, and we don't have as much time for Lamar to audible or people to see things or check in and out of certain things along the offensive line because we're having to sub a guy in, get in the huddle, get the play, and then get up to the line of scrimmage. Here's Ricard on the right, 22 personnel. So you got Andrews here, and you got Tomlinson here. And we're going to go counter option. So you got center and left tackle pulling again, like I talked about a couple of minutes ago. Ricard going opposite the play. And I think Ricard reads this as Lamar keeping it. Because if Ricard blocks Ngakwe, and I talked about, this, talked about this after week one. Again, center pulling, tackle pulling, Ricard crossing Lamar's face. And I think Ricard is reading Ngakwe just like Lamar is. And I think Ricard should kick out Ngakwe, and then Ngakwe will not be able to chase this thing down from behind the way he does when uh, Tyson Williams puts his foot in the ground, tries to go upfield. Ricard, I think, reads this as a give by Lamar, so he veers outside. You guys see it? Lamar reads this as a give to Tyson Williams, so he gives the football. If Ricard reads this as a give, he should be kicking out Ngakwe, so Ngakwe can't chase it down from behind. And we've got ourselves a good football play if Ngakwe is not here. In fact, we might have a touchdown because it's going to look like this by Tyson Williams. He saw it. He just didn't know that Ngakwe was there. 
So what's my point here? There was some times where we ran away from Ricard. Ricard's going opposite here, and we're running this way. So that's that's great. But there, let's be honest. There was a huge tell and tendency for us to run behind Pat Ricard. Um, I'm trying to provide a balanced assessment of the Ravens' offense using some data that I, I grabbed from other places on the Internet and then from my data that I have in my own database. A little bit more to say about 22 personnel. You see we're in the gun here. There was still too many times where we lined up in 22 personnel on second and three, and you and you knew what the play was. Here's a first and ten. We're running power. Look, in some cases we get a good gain. Not that one. That one's mislabeled. That one's labeled as a ten yard gain. That's not that's not accurate. Right there. That's not accurate at all. It's a one yard gain, maybe two. In some cases, though, we're lining up in 22 personnel, and it's entirely predictable. Look how the Raiders are lined up. Look at this box that the Ra Raiders are giving us. They got a seven technique. They got a, a, a angled six technique. You got your three inside backers. You got a strong safety who's a hell of a player and a corner up here playing force. Uh, Any way you cut it, it's a nine-man front. They're giving, us, they're giving us everything they can give us in here in terms of, you know, force player, force player, and guys who can fit it. You know, their inside backers were just playing typical – 4-3 uh, techniques in terms of spilling it with the first guy there. So he's taking on the puller on the inside. The front side guy is trying to box it in. So he's trying to fit on the outside, fit on the inside, and then this guy's trying to flow over the top and fit in, bet fit in between them. We were entirely too predictable in some situations. 22 personnel, definitely an example of that. But if you're going to say that, then you have to be willing to co-sign that 11 personnel was totally predictable as well. Our 11 personnel needs to be more balanced. Needs to be more, be more balanced. We need to be able to run the football some more out of 11 personnel and keep people off guard. Ricard to uh, Lamar's left. Cross and face. And to me, this is option right. And Williams is winding this thing back. Because we're reading Ngakwe. Lamar reads it as a give. And Ngakwe chases down again from behind. Ricard is reading this as a pull. So something's wrong there between them two. doesn't matter to me, to be honest with you, who it is. You know, some of these DNs for the Raiders were doing some interesting stuff. They would run here to force Lamar to keep it. That was Max Crosby and then run up field. That, that angle's kind of bad. They would run here and then run at Lamar. So basically they were forcing him to keep it and then running right at his face. And Gakwe, if you, if you ask me, was kind of, to me this should be a, this should be a, a, a keep. And Gakwe stepped down here. This, to me this should be a keep. Lamar generally reads it really well, especially for all the things he's asked to read. But in any case, third and four. Look at the front. Did they give us same front? One, two, three, four. This time they walked the sand backer up, so they don't have three inside backers. Well, they have two inside backers, but they walked the sand backer KJ right up in a, in a eleven, really. So they got a, one guy head up on this tight end, and then him outside. So they're trying to take away the strong side run as much as possible. We're, we're double-teaming K.J. Wright to kind of widen him up, isolate this guy. To me, this should have been a keep. Ricard looping around to get the front side inside backer, and then Lamar either running to the sideline or cutting this thing up here. Of course, it looks like this guy's going to be unblocked unless we combo up to him. But in a, I understand the Ravens' concepts. I get it. I just think we were, we, we were too predictable out of 22 and out of 11. All right, last one I'm going to show you guys is going to be 12 personnel. Already talked about the data. Let me talk about my data and where it fits. I have us only 29 plays out of 12 personnel. And here's the funny thing. 22 personnel, so Ricard on the field with two tight ends. We Remember, we were 61% run, 39% pass. So now 12 personnel, Ricard off the field, and we've got one tailback and some combination of two tight ends, You know, either Andrews and Tomlinson or Andrews and Boyle or something like that. Out of 29 plays, 
you would probably suspect that we're really highly weighted towards a run. Absolutely wrong. Nine runs and 20 passes. Again, I only have 29 plays for real. So, but but 9% is is what that would be. 10% would be um, 125. So we're, we're roughly talking about 120 plays somewhere around there. I have 29 of them. My numbers might be off there. It might not be 120 plays out of 12 personnel, but you know, 10% of 1251 would be 125, right? So 9% would be a little bit less than that. Let's call it 115. I've got 29 of those plays. I probably don't. Maybe I don't have a representative sample. It's possible. Hopefully, as I get more um, plays labeled. You know, I'll have a more representative sample. I'll do an update on this, I guess, if it's interesting to people at all. Again, league average on 12 personnel is 21%. Ravens minus 12 from that, only 9%. Miami was at 61. Let me get the plays dialed up here. Our yards per play out of 12 personnel was 5.21. You know, I'm not sure what there is to extrapolate that from that, uh, to be honest with you. Some of these yards per play, some of it's, you know, short yardage situations. So by definition, you're not going to get a ton of yards, right? So here's one where Ricard is running in motion. He originally lined up in the slot. Maybe he lined up outside of him. But he's not a part of the read here, if you ask me. The read is here. It's curl and then flat. Some people call it snag, whatever. Ricard is a dummy dummy route over here. So for those of you that want to complain about Ricard running routes, he's not part of read at all. Lamar never once looked over here. they got to account for him, though, because the tendency for us running the ball to the side Ricard motions to is real. It is a real thing. Now, this is actually mislabeled. This is not 12%. This is 22 there's 22 because there's a tailback, there's a fullback, and here's two tight ends. So this is this is labeled as 12 personnel. This is really 22, though. That happens sometimes. I've labeled uh, 470 plays, 478 plays for the Ravens offense. So certainly I'm going to make some mistakes with some of them. In any case, it's a positive play. Didn't gain many yards out of it. Again, 5.21 yards per play for the Ravens in the in the data that I have. Um, you know, do I think the Ravens are going to be a 12 personnel team? No. We got too much receiving talent. But the issue of Ricard is related to the issue of Andrews in the and the all twenty-two for excuse me, the end zone angle of um, game pass cut out there. That was not me cutting the video. Andrews is not used as an inline blocker that often. He's not. He's really not. So part of it is that you know, we can't use Andrews in certain ways. We can't use him as inline blocker in certain ways. We've got to account for him as well. little play action out of a flex stack look. This video is uh, working on 40 minutes long. Are there any conclusions that I'm trying to draw from this? No. I mean, I'm just offering data, offering observations based on intense film study. Hopefully you trust me, you know, and you've seen my channel enough to know that I'm, you know, I'm serious about the study. I'm serious about labeling the stuff in the database and trying to give you guys tendencies and, and data on when and how and why the Ravens do certain things. The Patrick Ricard issue should not have triggered so many pro-Ricard and anti-Ricard uh, thoughts among the Ravens fan base. He's a tool. He's a weapon that we can deploy in certain situations. In 2021, maybe that weapon or that tool was deployed and used too much. That, that's possible. But slow down. It was a, a, a very depleted roster. They had to rely on guys who, who knew the system and could do things. I think it's entirely possible that we were moving toward being more of an 11 personnel team. I do think that. I think there's evidence in the passing schemes, particularly with some of our choice routes and some of the reads that Lamar and the receivers had to make, that we were we were advancing in terms of the passing game early in midseason. Clearly, there was a drop-off. There can be no doubt about that. Still could win some of them football games, though. Still could win the Miami game. Hell, we could have won the Rams and the Packers game, right? Definitely could have won the Steelers game.
over overall points, you know, me with the two videos today, I'm trying to get the pro Ricard and anti Ricard guys to see that it's about more than Ricard. It is. It's, don't argue about the Ricard. Whatever your gripes are about Ricard, it's really a Greg Roman gripe. All the data that I've showed you, the predictability of 11 personnel, of course, there is third down and long, you know, situations there where everybody's heavily weighted towards the pass. I get it. But our 11 personnel should not be 84% pass. That's just too much. We need to go 11 personnel sometimes on first and 10 and and go ahead and run the ball. Or, or maybe to go 11 personnel on second and two and go ahead and run the ball. There needs to be some self-scouting there. And that's one of the things that uh, Skeptic Goat and I were talking one night like in the Discord. And it's, it's, there needs to be some self-scouting. I really question what the level of self-scouting is. I'm sure they're doing this in the offseason. I don't know if anybody's willing to do it. If anybody's doing it in the regular season, I volunteer as tribute. I'll self-scout. <laughs> for real, I'll self-scout. I'm watching the shit anyway. Might as well get paid for it. So, look, I think that everybody should calm down with criticizing and praising the signing of Ricard uh, with all the weapons that are there next year. And I do hope we add weapons. I do. I'm, I'm not one of those people that says, oh, we shouldn't add a weapon. I mean, hey, if you can go out there and you can get some talent. Robert Woods, is that was, that was, that was kind of frustrating for me. They can go out and they can get talent like Robert Woods. For a six-round pick, that kind of got me a little bit. I mean, Ravens, look what you could do. Now, granted, I know salary is a concern, I guess. So, you know, that that's an issue for the Ravens as well. You guys let me know what you think of all the data that I presented. I did have at least one, maybe two plays that was mislabeled. This one's not. You know, you can see that it's, it's 12 personnel. We got we got one right running back, and we got two tight ends hit down here stacked on each other. Oliver and Andrews, and we're getting the ball out, you know, to Duvernay out in the flats real quick with two lead blockers for a nice little game. I do think there's improvements that were made in the offense this year. I'm not a totally anti-Greg Roman guy. I do see that there's tendencies and predictability that's there in, in the way we call plays based on personnel at times. I do, I do think that there was situations where uh, – that where the Ravens did a good job, but those things disappeared, you know, about, around about halfway through the season. I'm going to show the data one more time. If you guys are interested in it at all, you know, message me on Twitter uh, or join the Patreon and, and you message me in the Discord anytime. We, we talk football all the time in there and, and try to move our way through some of these signings, uh, some of the fake signings like Zadarius Smith. Certainly there's pieces that needed to be need to be added. Ravens fans, I think, were frustrated with the Zadarius Smith signing. And, and I'm going to make a point to you. I think it's possible that Ricard does not get re-signed if Zadarius Smith stays with the Ravens. What I mean by that is, salary-wise, if you look at it, we might not have been able to squeeze Ricard back in there, uh, even though I think he generally signed a team-friendly deal that was, you know, pulled out over three seasons in terms of the cap hit. I think it's interesting that the progression, the way things happen. Ricard, a Ravens guy, handed his opportunity, not handed, give, given an opportunity by the Ravens. He took advantage of it. You know, early in his career, he took advantage of it. Transitioning from the D-line, D-tackle to, to fullback. Unbelievable, right? It's like he's coming from a wing T system. Um, and then now, I think he's a Ravens guy. I think he would have signed earlier if given the opportunity. You guys let me know what you think on that thought, what you think on my thoughts of the, the predictability of uh, certain personnel groupings. I didn't really deal with formations. Had a lot to say. Uh, maybe didn't hit on all the points that I wanted to make. But um, you can see the work that I'm trying to put in to provide data and information to you guys and um, and hopefully try to pull together uh, the, the people who have such widely held, strongly held um, opinions about about Pat Ricard, I think those those things should be um, a little bit more refocused on, you know, Greg Roman and and even to some extent Harbaugh because he's always omitted from some of these discussions and he's the guy at the end of the road who uh, who makes decisions. Um, I hope that there's a little bit more of a self scouting done uh, during the season to to force defenses to adjust and we're and we're a little bit more multiple. Let me know what you guys think of the video in the comment section.